will we be seeing a new announced team for Impact Wrestling? Indie stars set to debut for Impact Wrestling Explosion. The Sportster releases another online article that I think, well, is quite stupid. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. If you watched the last episode of Impact Explosion, you will have noticed that Josh Matthews was not doing the announcing, was not doing the play-by-play. The team of Matt Stryker and Don Callis were doing the play-by-play in the last episode of Impact Wrestling Explosion. And let me tell you something. I think they did a fantastic job calling the one match. It was Zachary Wentz against Matthew Mims. I think they did a fantastic job. It was like a breath of fresh air. You know, much better than Josh Matthews, in my opinion. Matt Stryker was, was fantastic. And I honestly believe that this is a dry run to make Matt Stryker and Don Callis the new announcers, the new play-by-play announcers for Impact Wrestling. Josh Matthews, Madison Rain, they're okay, but after listening to Matt Stryker and Don Callis on on one match for Impact Explosion, much better. Just like I said, a breath of fresh air. I hope I hope Matt Stryker and Don Callis, I hope they become the new announcers. I hope they become the new announcers for Impact Wrestling. It was just fantastic. I mean, the week before was Josh Matthews was calling the match. Uh, I believe it was Rhino, a uh, Rhino match. But Stryker and Callis, they have great chemistry together. And Don Callis wasn't being goofy Don Callis. He was being straight up, calling it down the right down the line. No goofiness. And he was fantastic. He was fantastic. And him and Matt Stryker worked really well together. I'm going to say it again, man. I, I really hope that this was just a dry run. That this was, you know, them just getting ready to take over the announcing jobs at Impact Wrestling. Because, you know, Impact Wrestling needs a change. They need a change. Josh Matthews, Madison Reed, they're, they're okay. But Stryker and Callis were much better. Much better. I really hope that we see an announcement coming up soon that Matt Stryker and Don Callis will be the new announcers for Impact Wrestling. And you could move Josh Matthews to Explosion. You know, he could call the one match. He could call the one match and give him a, a, a uh, backstage role. But it's, it's, they, it's, it really makes the product better. It really makes the product better when you have good, two good announcers. And Matt Stryker, I think, head and shoulders above Josh Matthews. That's my opinion. And he works well with Don Callis, so... Let's let's get to it, Impact Wrestling. Let's make Matt Stryker, Don Callis, the new announcers for Impact Wrestling. There. Now, I'll leave it at that. So, there's some really exciting indie talent coming. Really, really exciting indie talent coming to Impact Wrestling. And um, let's, let's talk about it for a bit. It was announced. Um, actually, uh, Alex Shelley took to his Twitter account and, and um, announced that the, these three guys are coming. And I, I, I'll admit I wasn't familiar with them. Uh, Benjamin Carter, Trey Lamar, and Lee Moriarty uh, all come into Impact Wrestling. Uh, they'll be debuting on Explosion. So I had to check these guys out. And Black Label Pro on um, Independent Pro Wrestling, uh, the streaming site, just had two recent shows. And all three guys were on the shows. And let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something, man. These guys are freaking exciting, man. I'm, I'm super excited. That these guys are coming to Impact Wrestling. Sure, they're going to be an explosion to start off, but there's no doubt that they're going to make it to that main roster. We're going to see them on the main show um, soon enough. Um, 
Benjamin Carter uh, took on uh, Anthony Henry. Uh, Trey Lamar took on uh, Trey Miguel at the Black Label Pro Show. And uh, Lee Moriarty took on the walking weapon, Josh Alexander. Uh, there were two separate shows. Um, uh, Trey Lamar uh, took on um, Trey Miguel on one show. And the other two matches happened on a separate show. Uh, but, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. you got to check these guys out. Benjamin Carter, Trey Lamar, and Lee Moriarty. These guys are the future of professional wrestling. Great, great pickups by Impact Wrestling. I, I, there's, I'm not reading that they're signed to a contract, but they're, they're making their debuts nonetheless on Impact Wrestling. And just they will be absolutely fantastic additions to the X division, exactly what the X division needs. Um, just a shot of a shot of adrenaline, a breath of fresh air. These guys, I mean, these guys can go. Josh Alexander against Lee Moriarty was was just a fantastic match. Holy smoke! Holy smoke! Lee Moriarty held his own and went, just went shot for shot, move for move with Josh Alexander. And uh, Josh Alexander has been tweeting about that match for a couple of days now, and it was just fantastic. Benjamin Carter, um, my gosh, this this kid is freaking incredible, just simply incredible. I was just, my mind was just blown watching these three guys. Usually when they bring any talent in, it's like, oh, one guy's going to be a standout. But all three guys, Trey Lamar against Trey Miguel was another, just a terrific match. So all three guys that they're bringing in are just, just have incredible, incredible potential. Huge upsides on, on, all three, on all three of these guys. Just fantastic. And, you know, you got Jackson Stone that's waiting in the wings to, to make his debut. The The future looks bright for Impact Wrestling. Trey, Trey Lamar, Benjamin Carter, Lee Moriarty, and you throw Jackson Stone into the mix. And if they bring in Aiden Prince, holy smoke. This is exactly what Impact Wrestling needs. They, they made the big signings. You know, they brought in their veterans, Eric Young, you know, the Good Brothers, EC3's back. And now they're mixing in the young talent. And it's just... <sighs> It's it's just it's just so exciting right now, man. So exciting. They they haven't debuted yet on on Explosion. They haven't debuted yet on Explosion, but uh, the debuts are coming, and I can't wait. I can't wait, and they will be on the main roster before long. They're very 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 talented. I I can't say enough of that. I was just I was so impressed watching them on these, this Black Label Pro Show. They were just absolutely fantastic. And check them out. Again, I'm going to say their names. Trey Lamar, Benjamin Carter, Lee Moriarty. Check all three of them out. They are going to be stars, future stars of professional wrestling. And like I said, I, I, the article I'm reading doesn't mention that they're signed to a contract uh, with Impact Wrestling, but Impact Wrestling should wrap these three up to three-year deals. No doubt. No doubt. They should wrap them up for three-year deals because I can see all three of them becoming stars for Impact Wrestling. And again, don't forget about Jackson Stone. Jackson Stone is going to be a star as well. So they have four guys on the horizon that are, that are uh, on their way to becoming stars in Impact Wrestling. And I kind of like what they're doing with Explosion. It's kind of kind of like what I said uh, a few podcasts ago, a few weeks ago. Um, in terms of uh, explosion being kind of like a developmental, you know, it'll push, just throw a bunch of indie stars on, on explosion and um, let's see what they're all about. And that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Uh, in addition to the the fourth that I mentioned, the last two episodes there there were some new faces on on explosion. Uh, we saw Rhino against Nate Bach, and then uh, last week was um, Wentz against uh, Matthew Mims. It's going just by Mims. So we're seeing new faces. And even you know, the Wentz-Matthew uh, Mims match, uh, Don Callis actually called it a tryout match for Mims. So so you're getting tryout matches on Explosion. We're seeing young talent. We're seeing new faces. Exactly what they need to do with Explosion. Exactly what they need to do with Explosion. And with the talent that's coming to Explosion, it's, Explosion's going to get very exciting. Explosion's going to get very, very exciting very, very fast. And they need to stop the one-match thing. If they're going to bring in all this new talent to Explosion, we need just like two or three fresh matches in Explosion. Forget about the... Forget about the... The the past matches, the highlights. Forget about you know talking segments. Just give us 
indie stars. Just give us fresh faces. Just give us three matches and explosion. That's the way to do it. But even if they don't do it, even if we just get the one match, we're still going to see all these fresh faces coming in. And it's very, very exciting. Very, very exciting time for Impact Wrestling. And I, as a fan, you know, you, you, you just, this, this is the type of stuff you want to see as a fan. This is the type of stuff you want to see as a fan. And I'm, I, for one, am very, very excited. And I, am, I, for one, am very, very looking forward to the next couple episodes of Impact Explosion. And uh, you should be too. You should be too. Okay, so thesportster.com. Thesportster.com releases an article uh, titled Slammiversary, Five Great Things TNA Did That Night and Five Mistakes They Made. So first of all, that title has one huge mistake. Okay, because it's not five great things TNA did that night. It's five great things Impact Wrestling did that night. And, of course, you know, they can't just be positive. They got to throw in five mistakes that they made. So this guy, Sean, Sean Lilos, uh, who wrote the article, apparently isn't aware that it's no longer called TNA, that it's called Impact Wrestling. Because he starts the article, TNA Slammiversary 2020 was in most regards a huge success. Okay, Impact Wrestling Slammiversary, not TNA's Slammiversary. What, what, do, do these guys do any research? Do these guys follow anything? I mean, are they just given an assignment and they just like, oh, the TNA, what's called TNA, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write about uh, TNA. Do they do any research? Do they know what they're writing about? Do they know the promotion that they're writing about? It's Impact Wrestling. I mean, if you're going to write for the sportster.com, First of all, which is a a well known website, you know, which is a legitimate website with lots of people read it. At least do a little bit of research and show you care a little bit about what you're writing about. Okay, so that's the first big thing that kind of bothered me. It's not TNA. It's Impact Wrestling. And second, Slammiversary happened July 18th, 2020. So on August 23rd, they decide to write an article about um, five great things they did and five mistakes they made. It was over a month ago. Okay, So, you, that, so you, uh, you're going to speak about something that happened a month ago. Why, why are you waiting so long to talk about Slammiversary? <laughs> this, it's just stupid. And some of the things, you know, they, they talk about some, you know, they have some good, good things, you know, the good things that happen, but they talk about some of the bad things. And I, um, I, I kind of disagree. One of the mistakes that they claim in that some verse we made was there was no EC3 return. You know, there was no EC3 return. They said EC3 just cut a promo and he wasn't actually on the show and there was no match with EC3. So, uh, they said, I said, EC3 is is back in Impact Wrestling, and all he did at the biggest pay per view of the year. Well, it's not really the biggest pay per view of the year. Bound for Glory is really the biggest pay per view of the year for Impact Wrestling. But uh, they said the biggest pay per view of the year was to have a video promo at the very end. He said they said fans tuning in to see the return of EC3 were left disappointed. Okay, who who did they ask about this? I wasn't disappointed. I was I was ecstatic to see EC3 back in Impact Wrestling. Well, did they take a poll, or, or was it just this guy Sean who was disappointed? What, what, was it the the people at at Sportster.com were they disappointed? I wasn't disappointed, and I know I know I, I spoke to many many Impact Wrestling fans, and they weren't disappointed. So what is he talking about? What is he talking about? This, this, this is the new EC3 character. This is the introduction to the new EC3 character. So yes, you're not going to see him back in a match or taking somebody out right away. The, the video promo was perfect. The video promo, in my my opinion, was just perfect. Perfect way to bring EC3 back into to Impact Wrestling. Perfect way. Nothing wrong with it. It was not a mistake at all. Sorry. Sorry, man. And another mistake that, that they mentioned was the Rich Swan return. That Rich Swan was the was the fourth wrestler. Yes, I agree. When he first came out initially, I was oh Rich Swan. Okay, I was a little disappointed, but then what happened next made sense, and the Rich Swan return made complete sense, and it wasn't a mistake because right after he returned, Eric Young came back, and Rich Swan made the return because he was coming off the leg injury, and Eric Young attacked Rich Swan, which gave him immediate heat. 
So that's the reason why Rich Swan came back. That's the reason why Rich Swan was the fourth guy and Eric Young came out and he was the fifth guy. Fifth guy because the plan all along was for Eric Young to attack Rich Swan and just get immediate heat, which he, which he got, which happened, which was which was fantastic. So that's why Rich Swan returned and it wasn't a mistake at all. If you think a little bit about about what went down at Slammiversary. This guy probably didn't even watch Slammiversary. He probably just read some results online. He probably didn't even watch it. Probably didn't even watch it. So it made total sense for it to be Rich Swan, uh, t- given what happened uh, with Eric Young. Complete sense. Complete sense. Not a mistake at all. Another mistake that they said was was the Good Brothers. The Good Brothers. How in the hell was bringing in the Good Brothers a mistake. They said it was a wasted opportunity. They said they were barely used at Slammiversary, and they came with the same save Eddie Edwards at the end and celebrating with him at the end of the show. It was like a wasted opportunity. What wasted opportunity? What wasted opportunity? This this guy said um, that people were expecting Gallows and Anderson to, to answer their... Answer the open challenge to the rascals would have made no sense for them to answer the open challenge to the rascals. You know why go in against the rascals? These are top stars. They need to be, they need to be infused into the main event picture immediately. Not you no. Know, oh, let's have a match with the rascals. You know, and this was not a mistake at all. Why he was upset because there was no match with the Good Brothers? Why do they have to have a match? We all knew the Good Brothers were, and they, they signed with Impact Wrestling. They announced the night before that they were going to be at Slammiversary. They didn't have to have a match. They came out, they saved Eddie Edwards, and thus they began their feud with Austin, with Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. Perfect. There was nothing wrong with that. It was not a mistake at all. It was not a mistake at all. You know, the, the hell with the sportster, man. The hell with the sportster. This, this, I really wish that I could speak with this guy, Sean Lelos, who wrote this article. Because I want to find out if he actually watched Slammiversary. I want to find out if he actually watched the show. Because I don't think he did, to be honest. Anyway, that's my show for today. My name is Lewis Carlin. Thanks for listening today. Until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye. <laughs>